Um, <laughs> I would like to invite um, two uh, UNESQ students uh, to close and reflect on today. Um, so Lolita and Tyler, um, I'll just ask you, I mean, Lolita does start this for us, so um, I'll just invite you to the stage. Um, and we might use the lectern for this, just for the uh, tech. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm nervous. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we would like to thank everybody. Oh, we don't have, we, do we have executives still here? But I think this session is for you. Okay, so we have the voice. We would like it to air for you. Okay, so I'm Lolita. I'm a PhD student from the University of Southern Queensland. And I think I'm not really into talking, but I'm just trying to be brave. So yeah, so Dr. Lucy set us an inspirational tone and, and engagement for today. And there are just five notes that I really looked into, into her uh, keynotes. Okay, so I have here some notes. So I, I, I highlighted inclusivity. Okay, so this is because they, it gives us the question whether these students really are heard. What does really inclusivity means? We are trying to look into, are they really actively participating or we're just hearing them? So this implies that despite the ideals of inclusivity, there may be other institutional barriers. So what are these? These are some things that we have to look into. Is it about the lack of representation? Why? So is this about unequal uh, power dynamics? How do we minimize this? So, or do we really create, is, we have failed to create the environment that is actually safe for them. So this is the reason why we are silenced. So another thing is diversity and intersectionality. This is the rec recognition that we are from various backgrounds, experiences, and identities. Again, this silence people. We may be, we may have all the theories. We are hearing all best practices, they said. They are on the papers, they are being presented, but are they really what it is? So the next thing is we have the trauma-informed approach. We have, uh, this is really very important. As we know that everybody, we, every, our students, we as students comes from different, uh, we may have experienced different trauma and this has profoundly um, impacted on how in our well health, well-being and how we participate in decision-making of the university. So this trauma, we may not be able to come out. Okay, so how do our, um, how do our administrators or managers go about this. So another is participation in decision making. We students and I myself is, a, is guilty of, we are part of the voice. We are part of the steering committee of, of or project of, a, of an organization, of our institution. But are we there as, a, as our presence is acknowledged? but do we have a part in the decision-making or we are just part of the attendance, okay? So, so what are quiet students or quiet, a silenced voice, okay? So this implies that students' voices are not heard and this raises concern about why this might be happening. Truly, we may be, we know all these theories, we know all this is happening. We have all these stories given, but the, my question is, are we really enlightened of what's being, what's happening to the students? So me as an international student, I want to share the, uh, I, they would say racism, but it's, I think we cannot do about it, but Australia being an, an international student economy, 
I've heard it's third in the uh, GP, uh, GDP. But yes, have we heard them? Have we heard the international students? We have lots of voices out there. They may not be heard because they don't want to be heard. They are silenced because they can't do anything. They are, they want to voice, but where is equity? Uh, we were talking about uh, the balance of studies, the balance of life, and the balance of volunteerism. Where will we go? Is diversity, is inclusivity, inclusivity mean we are also looking into the economic aspects of our students? So I think this is something that we have to work on. Um, we are students. We only have limited limit limit timeline in our in our degrees so after we have been proactive who will come next and who will take our post we just hope we only can hope that there are other people who are also passionate as us who goes uh to sessions with uh with open heart and despite snacks is do will do but yes, we have to consider everything. And I think this is the reflection that I've seen, but I hope this will be heard and we move forward. Thank you, Lolita, for sharing your reflection. My name is Taylor and I am the co-chair of the inaugural Student Senate here at UNESQ. I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to be a part of this symposium today and it's been really inspiring um, networking with all, all of you and hearing the different things that you're implementing at your own universities. Um, before I wrap up each session, I first just wanted to share a key self-reflection that I've had from the day when considering the idea of a quiet voice. For me today was an opportunity to reflect on my own privilege and my own student voice. I'm in a very privileged position where I'm easily able to have my student voice heard. I have a fantastic team here at UNESQ that are always happy to listen when I have something to say. Um, but I recognize that for a lot of students that isn't the case and perhaps they don't always have the confidence or the network to be able to raise their student voice. So beyond this symposium, um, I aim to continue to self-reflect on this point uh, when capturing and communicating the student voice and utilize that in my role as a co-chair. Um, now to wrap up the day. So the student fishbowl discussion was an amazing opportunity to hear from six incredible student representatives across a wide range of experiences on identifying barriers that student voices may experience, discussing experiences of students in higher education committees, governing bodies and guilds. The session also saw students sharing, sharing strategies, resources, and advice for ensuring quiet student voices are represented. I know I personally took a lot from listening to what the other universities were implementing, and I hope to be able to share some of that back with my student senate here at UNESQ as well. Um, thanks to Lisa Connolly, the disabil disability and inclusion representative from UNESQ student senate for moderating this session. You did a fantastic job. I attended the case studies amplification of the student voice from student staff co-design and implementation of a strategy focused student advisory council people at heart of process and student as part of partners co-creation of curricular model enhancing the learning experience through assessment rubric design with students for students bit of a mouthful but very engaging sessions it was really insightful to hear the various student partnerships across a variety of institutions and the role student-centered approaches have improved curricular and co-curricular outcomes um, thank you to all the speakers for sharing your knowledge there. It's so great to be surrounded by people so passionate about enhancing the student voice. And yeah, I'm really excited to see what happens in this space with all of you involved. The panel sessions included both students and practitioners with significant experience in student governments space to discuss their own journey in student governments. In talking about these experiences, it also led to discussions on the different levels of advocacy, as well as sharing strategies in ensuring the quiet voices are consulted with and represented in higher educations in a collaborative way. And thank you to Andrew Johnson at SVA Operational Group Covina from the University of Southern Queensland for moderating this session. Um, thank you very much for all your attention today. I'm now gonna pass back over to Anna. Again, thank you for all your hard work um, to finalize the symposium so that we can all finally head off to the brewery and enjoy Friday. <laughs> Uh, I'm
promise I won't be taking too much of your time, uh, but I would like to still go through a couple of very important notes. And uh, one of them is how many of you were excited to be here on Friday the 13th? Because I, I was probably not as excited as Ali. <laughs> um, so thank you, uh, Lolita and Taylor, for your reflection. Um, and I think it's a really good wrap for us. Um, so uh, let me just go through a couple of important notes to make sure I've got everything. Um, OK. So firstly, I would like to invite everyone to consider joining our network for the next year. Um, so every year we do a quick call out to our members as well as our um, other uh, institutions that join our sessions. For example, symposium, we've got a couple of uh, people from different institutions that are not members. We invite you to consider and uh, um, you know invite your leadership to also uh, spare some uh, budget to join us for next year. This is how uh, this network grows and this is how we do some meaningful work together. And um, as a network, we have been growing every year. Uh, this year we've had 28 institutions um, across Australia and New Zealand and across the sector um, of uh, TAFEs and um, higher education universities. So uh, please consider joining us for next year as well and continuing um, your work and your participation and engagement with SVA next year as well. Uh, you will be um, in the email um, as attendees, all of you will receive um, a prospectus for membership next year where you can familiarize yourself with the goals for next year. We have um, made a couple of new additions um, so please uh, just have a look at the document, um, ask me any questions, and we will make sure uh, we get everyone on board next year. And um, as SV SVA being hosted by UNESQ, we obviously have set some ambitious goals for ourselves as well to engage as many uh, practitioners and students as possible as well. So I'm going to be um, emailing all of you <laughs> and uh, continuing uh, sort of that collaboration with all of you. Um, what to expect next from this symposium because we really like to make sure there are resources for you to refer to all of the sessions were recorded and we will um, create some sort of resource for you to access the recordings um, as well as we will be working on the handbook uh, with the abstracts with the um, session summaries uh, so you can again take that away uh, and have that you know share that with your colleagues and re reference that and come back to it um, so plus just give us a bit of time to get that all done um, and uh, we will make sure to communicate that with you. Um, uh, oh, very important one. I think it's in a couple of slides. Uh, and the next one and another one. This one. This is the, probably the most important slide of the day. We would love to know how we can improve symposium in future. Uh, what have we done right? What uh, could be improved? Uh, what were your ref reflection of the day? Obviously, the mirror has been collecting um, some of those reflections already, but we would love to know uh, more. So please fill this out. I also will have that in the email for you on Monday. Um, and uh, I, okay, my personal reflection as, uh, as a new coordinator at SVA, I, um, a lot, a lot of that I've been hearing from my predecessors is that it's a very hard work and a lot is on the coordinator and I, my experience is very different to that and um, it's been only a couple of months of me doing this work and I can definitely tell that it's not just me who has been organizing uh, the symposium, who's been, um, you know, taking, making sure the network is running. Um, UNESQ has done an incredible job to make sure the SVA is supported and resourced and um, you will hear from you will hear quite a quite a list of people who've been involved in organizing the symposium and that just is a reflection of um, the commitment UNESQ has to ensure this goes on and this grows but also I think um, overall we can see the progression of like the value and the importance of this work and it's been recognized and uh, championed by um, leadership. So um, huge thanks. I'm going to go through the list, and I hope you all, um, you know, recognize again just how many people were involved in bringing this together. Um, huge thanks to 
Ali Jake. So um, without Ali, you know, um, who is a director who's very busy, um, she was always happy to look at the resources, links, check the email, it's just, just being the soundboard for me to feel like I'm not like the only one who's doing this work. So I really appreciate your dedication to the network. Um, I big thanks to Jim Nyland who um, opened the symposium today as a convener of the steering group and uh, also being quite quite interested in success of this symposium as well. His support um, is quite valuable uh, for my work as well. Um, to Andrew Johnson, who is uh, who's been a great backup for me, honestly, and also a sounding board checking links, uh, but also convening the operational group and obviously today being an incredible host of the panel. Um, we also have um, UniSQ events and comms team who have been running the show. I feel like, um, you know, there's a term of passenger princess. I feel like I was a passenger princess of this conference in terms of just not dealing with logistics too much. Our events team, um, Nat, uh, Liv, and Trinette have been just incredible uh, looking after all of you throughout the day. Um, we also have worked uh, closely with our members. So it's not just UniSQ who have been bringing this together, it's you. So uh, we've, we've had five students and two practitioners um so it was bailey uh, who's in the room who's lisa who's also uh, with us jennifer um hello from university of new newcastle um camille um from acu victoria lister somewhere in the room as well from griffith uh ron uh, from une online and uh rosemary from mq so uh, all these people were integral in developing the program, coming up with a theme, making sure we can explain the theme and uh, take it further, invite speakers, uh, moderating sessions. Um, without them, the symposium wouldn't be what it is. Um, so our speakers, uh, our case study submissions, again, it's all your work. It's, you, you know, again, symposium wouldn't be without case studies, wouldn't be without panelists. So really thank you um, to our keynote, to our panelists, um, to our presenters at the workshop, um, at the workshop and student panelists at the Fishbowl. Everyone just, again, brought, like, came together and made this what it is. Um, okay, and the, uh, okay, I think the, I think the biggest role in organizing this was actually Lisa Connolly, who uh, we were we hired and we made sure that um, you know we have extra hands in helping me uh, bringing this together. But Lisa, I feel like you brought not just extra hands, extra feet, maybe tentacles, because I feel like you've done so much um, in such a short period of time, and I f I genuinely feel very <laughs> privileged to be able to collaborate with her and learn a lot of organization you should see how like my folders and her folders and just the difference and how drastic it is um and how organized she she was throughout this whole uh time and finally thank you uh for coming here thank you for those who are online for sticking with us all day i appreciate you and now we are going to brewery and if you <laughs> if you're wondering where it is it's only two minutes walking um which way um so yeah if you walk out of the building and just go straight a little bit and then turn left that's the brewery um we have ordered some platters for everyone i depends how many of you turn up um we might have enough might may not but we also had some leftovers from lunch so we'll see what we can do but um this is where you continue networking where you continue um you know club like meeting each other and personally again i have so many friends in this room so many friends in this room that i haven't had a chance to even properly say hello probably uh but uh that's how i feel in this sector that's where you you just connect with people because you're here for the values you're here uh because you genuinely connect and um i hope you develop friendships as well in this room and take it away with you and your institutions thank you And just a final round of applause and big thanks to Anna, who's done a wonderful job today. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your weekend.